I, I just did it because I just thought we hadn't had one in a while, and I felt like I could use it. Um, so I was like, you know what, Let's, we should do that. And then it, I, it did not even occur to me that today's Father's Day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always works out like that. Yeah. It used to happen on like your birthday. I'd like I just stop over, or whatever. It's, it's so funny. Oh, yeah, I thought there was a something in the Bible about honoring your father and your mother, isn't there? Uh, yes. What am I doing wrong? Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. What am I doing wrong? I know where the verse is. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. What word oh, I know. I know what it is. Doggone it! It's honor, not honor. I thought. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was still. I was gonna say that, but I thought it was. Would have still picked it up. Huh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Honor thy okay. father uh-huh. and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yeah. So. Uh, it's a you know it's, to me it's a promise from God that if we honor our mother and our father, that the days of our life will be long. Not a guarantee, but uh, mm-hmm. it's yeah, to me it seems uh, critical, seems important that we do mm-hmm. respect our elders and honor our father and mother. And you can see those people. I'm sure you've met them. I've met them that that they disrespect their mother and their father. They they talk about the negative things uh, mm-hmm. about their mom and dad. And anybody could do that. Anybody can say, "Oh, mom's a witch and dad's a jerk," you know that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But. Um, I think I really do. I think it's important to honor our mother and our father, and and to say the positive things about them, and to remember the positive things about them because they were young too, just like you were young and <laughs> I was young, and we all make mistakes. They made mistakes, mm-hmm. but um, they they did the best they could, right, in raising you, and, yeah. and we ought to honor them. Uh, regardless of whatever flaws they might have had, so. Yeah, I agree. It's it's pretty interesting to think about. And, you know, it's funny when when you were my age, I was uh, well, well, I've been like eight. In uh, nineteen eight or nine. Nineteen ninety-two. Right. You were twenty. Yeah, you were twenty. I was thirty. Thirty. You were twenty. Oh wait a second! What? What is? And I was twenty-two when you were born. Yeah. And now you're thirty-two, so that it would have been two thousand and two, right? Yeah. So you, I, you would have been ten, nine well, or ten. I'm, you would have been nine, yeah, technically. Well, I'll, I'll be thirty-two in three months. Oh, so you're thirty-one, <laughs> right? Not, yeah, not quite there. Yeah. But so, yeah. So I would have been like, I guess I would have been nine yep. when you were my age. Nine. And. I can't. What year is this? 2000. Imagine how. 2001? 2002. Right. Yeah, 2001, 2002. Yeah, like, I, you know, it, it'll say 2002 because I would I, I'll turn 32 here in a few months, so. Right. And I didn't. For being exact about it. And I wasn't born of God until 2001, September 2001. Oh yeah, see, so yeah, interesting. So I would have been a, really a new believer, and I would have been studying, reading the the Bible every day, and then I would have been on Yahoo chats talking to people about various different things, various different people about various different things, in not just about the Bible, but about um, Islam and about um, Judaism as well. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where I was when I was 31, 32. Just, uh, you know, I felt like I was so far behind that I had to read the Bible every day. I had to l- bring in as much information as possible uh, to sort of get up to speed. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And of course, it, it took years to find out that it, it, nobody's up to speed, it seems like. It seems to me like very few people actually do read the Bible and actually believe it. It's one thing to read the Bible, but then to actually believe it is another thing. And I wonder that about a lot of people. Do they actually believe what they're reading? Or are they just echoing what uh, what they've heard other people say? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It seems to me like a 100%. lot of... Like, uh, you know, when you were... Like, when I was in school, I would copy other people's homework and copy other people's tests like I was shortcutting the system you know what I'm talking about yeah rather than understanding the work that I was doing I was trying to shortcut the system and I think that's what people are doing in regards to the Bible they'll go some will go to the church once a week and say that's enough and then some people will listen to uh, p uh, preachers talk about the Bible and, and believe what they say. And uh, in the case, in the in regards to schoolwork, when we were in school, it was actually I didn't realize that at the time, but it was it's a good thing not to understand any of it because it's all garbage. But the Bible is not all garbage. So you want to take the time, not just to read it, but to know that these are the right. words from God. Without that, right. without faith, it's it's impossible to understand. Yeah, that completely transforms the way you see it, and frankly, the way you see everything. It's kind of changes the way you see life, and yeah, yeah, it's definitely amazing. Um, I was actually kind of talking to somebody about something like that last night. Um, there's this, <laughs> there's this girl that uh, um, stumbled upon her randomly playing uh, my game I play, League of Legends, and uh, she hung out with me and my friend group a few times. And I don't remember why I brought it up, but. Um, you know, I asked her something along the lines of what, what her beliefs are, and she's Catholic. And I'm like, great, right, here we go again. <laughs> uh, these Catholic, uh, these young Catholic girls, and they, they'll just argue to the end of time about something they don't don't even understand. Um, but we had a good conversation though. But I was talking about because she she had a problem with the idea that uh, believing is enough to, uh, you know, what she would say, get you into the gates of heaven, is how she said it, but, um, you know, so we had that conversation, she brought up a few verses, one of them was, of course, James 2, I felt like I did a pretty good job, um, kind of countering what she was trying to say, the important thing, and, and, and you know, it's, it's because, uh, because I know that there's no contradictions. I know that there's some reason that it's saying what it's saying. So, you know, I would skim the context of it. Obviously, James 2, I already have heard that one a million times, but the other ones were like, there's something in Proverbs and something, uh, I can't remember, I, I, I don't have it handy, but um, I was just trying to explain to her that, um, you know, y yes, it, it really is that simple, but it has to be sincere faith. You have to truly believe it. You can't just say, and that's what I feel like people will just say, you know, oh yeah, sure. Do you believe in Jesus? Oh, sure, yeah, of course. But, but I don't know, do they really? Because it doesn't seem like people do. It's not for me to know, but I just think that that's, I, th I think that's where a lot of people get confused is if they don't fully understand the gospel, they don't fully understand what Jesus' sacrifice was, you know, and they, maybe the, 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 the faith isn't sincere in their hearts. I don't know. I, I don't. I just think about maybe like when I was a kid. Like it, if you would ask me, and I'm talking like really young, like before I was a teenager. If you would ask me, I was sure. But I just don't feel like. You know, I, I didn't have anywhere near that understanding or faith that I have now. And I feel like there's probably a lot of, a lot of people who 
who are still kind of at that level, just sort of that like baseline. Um, I don't know. It's 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 kind. It feels to me, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but it feels to me more like kind of like what you were saying with um, they're just kind of repeating what they hear other people say. Uh, I don't know that they. I don't know that it's sincere for a lot of people. Maybe I'm wrong, but no. I you know I I think if you look at how it was in the days of Noah, okay, and how many were saved in the days of Noah? Eight. Eight souls were saved in the days of Noah. You look at um, uh, the Sodom the, and Sodom when uh, Lot and Abraham were in this and uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. And Abraham negotiated with the Lord uh, about destroying Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, if I got the right chapter here 18 um, yeah and the and it started off the negotiation started off there, if there were 50 righteous within a the city then I will spare all the place for their sake right and then the more and more Abraham thought about it the more and more he wanted to negotiate that number down to 10 and so he, so God said all right if there's ten righteous, I won't destroy this place. Well, what happened? God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities round about. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so there weren't even ten righteous. And you think about uh, Luke 18. When um, it says here that uh, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That's a heck of a question to ask. Will there be nobody that has faith on the earth? All right. Now consider Matthew 24, Luke, thir um, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, where it says, where Jesus says that except those days be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, if God allowed things to play out as they're playing out right now, there will come a point to where nobody will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So it's interesting to me, if we are in the last time, then we ought to expect to see a lot of people claiming to believe in Jesus but their hearts are far from him mm-hmm all right right exactly That's... And, and yeah and so it shouldn't be surprising um, it, it, that's just that's what I I can't help but wonder you know when you've got all these people that are disregarding the Word of God and putting more trust into what their preacher or their pastor says than what the Word of God actually says. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I just wonder, I just wonder. To me, that's exactly what we ought to expect mm -hmm. if we are in the last time. And that, to me, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, I agree. This girl, uh, she she's pretty young, I think, and it sounds like she just goes to church, like probably with her parents, because she feels like she has to or something. So I I didn't expect her to really have rebuttals um, when I started talking to her about stuff, but but uh, it was still a good conversation. Can um, uh, is there one example that you'd like to talk about? You know, I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm trying to skim through it. I mean, like I said, she brought up a few verses that I feel like I kind of shut down. But um, well, I know James two and Hebrews six, yeah. and Hebrews ten. It's the, the other ones. She uh, said she was quoting some other version too, so maybe it was a little bit confusing. 
Like one of them was Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. When I skimmed through that, um, it looked like. I mean, she, she was just trying to justify like action. It's like obviously there's nothing. It's not that it's bad. Um, obviously there are good things with certain actions you can take and good works and stuff like that. But I told her that. Um, to me, it looks like, given the context of that chapter, it seemed more like it was referencing the relief, sort of, that you would get from confessing. I mean, because right after this, as happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. I mean, it just, I don't think it's really talking about salvation here. Um, I don't know. No, you're, you're exactly right. He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that fears alway, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. So you're exactly right. This is not about everlasting life. This is about the your life right now in this world. Right. Yeah, because if you, if you sin and you try to pretend that you didn't, it could eat away at you. It feels better to be honest with yourself and with others. And that's sort of, I think, what, what the mercy is saying. But, yes. So, you know, she, I, I didn't falter for trying, but she, she was kind of just like taking stuff out of context. I asked her to share a Bible verse with me um, when she initially, you know, didn't agree with whatever it was that I said. Um, <laughs> I, I've told you before about talking Catholic girl, and I sent her this post that I had made about sort of a, sort of like a basic understanding of what salvation is, um, and I, I sent it to this Catholic girl, and she got really mad. We had this like three hour conversation, and she she hasn't talked to me since then, and it was kind of it's kind of unfortunate because um, I don't know we, we had a lot of good conversations, but she just got really mad about that one because I wasn't sugarcoating anything. Um, and so I thought that might happen again. I, I shared the same thing with this girl, and that was what she started sort of disagreeing with. But it was it was still a pretty good conversation, I think. It didn't seem like she got mad. I, I tried to also, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm trying to, trying to be kind and not just, like, prove that I'm right yeah. to people. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just share the information and try not to overstate things and try not to tell people that well you're wrong this is what the bible says it's like even even if that's true i just share what the bible says and i, I try to be i'm trying try to be a little more respectful this time around so maybe i don't know maybe i learned from the last one but. no no i think that's the wise approach so if you uh it take take the attitude that i'm right you're wrong that's a bad attitude <sighs> A lot of yeah. people take that attitude. It's like it's not about what is right. It's about you being right, and that's not that's a bad attitude. Right. Because you're just saying that you don't care about the truth. Whereas if you have confidence in the truth, it won't matter if the other person shouts you down or not. Your mm -hmm. the truth stands on its own. Mm -hmm. And all you can do is present the truth and stand by the truth, and and um, you know. That's all you can do, whether the other person accepts the truth, accepts you, no matter, the truth still stands. Uh -huh. Right, so I, I just got a, a quick thought here on this. Um, um, he that covers his sin shall not prosper. So to me, uh, you know, like I like to watch a lot of true crime. And so it's very uh -huh. typical of a murderer. And of course, we can, we can draw comparisons with Cain and Abel. But... A murderer will try to cover his crime, and and so by doing, he's gonna lie, and he's gonna hide, and he's gonna just make all sorts of uh, mistakes, and to he's gonna commit more sins trying to cover up the one sin, to whereas if he just confesses gets it off his shoulders the weight will be lifted 
then mercy is given uh, to that person and he won't be carrying the burden and he won't be committing more sins to cover up one sin it's just it, there's a lot there there really is uh -huh. and, and um, you can't hide from your sins um, you can't cover them God sees all he, you might try to hide them from men but you know it and God knows it and so you can't you really can't hide your sins but when you confess them you can lift that burden up for from, uh, from your um, when you confess them you can lift the burden off your shoulders and the whole reason why Jesus died was to carry that that burden for you to lift that burden up from you and to uh -huh. and he laid down his life so that your sins will be covered he became sin the man that knew no sin became sin for us to cover our our sin let's see let's see if I can find that verse here oh and you know what I, I wish I could have found this verse you're talking about because I, I I glanced I didn't see it but at one point she thought that she was trying to say Jesus sinned but Mary never did <laughs> like, oh you know, good night uh, you sure I just said you that's, sure about that she, she took some time to think about it and she she was like actually you know what maybe I'm wrong she, yeah. she backed up on that but <laughs> Yeah, Second Corinthians five verse twenty one. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Yeah, there it is. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Right. So, uh, Mary, Mary sinned. Mary, <laughs> if Mary didn't sin, then the Bible's a lie. All right. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and of course that includes. Me. Yeah, and I told her. Um, oh, I don't know where I said it. I can't. Even but basically, I said that I said that Jesus is the exception to the rule. There. Um, Even Mary needed a savior. And even Mary called Jesus Lord. I wonder if I could find that verse here. Anyway, what were you saying? Oh, nothing. I'm, I'm curious of what you're looking for here, but um, I was just saying, like, uh, you know. Like it says for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. I don't want her to try to use that. It's like, well, Jesus too. It's like, no. Jesus is the only begotten Son. He's the exception. That's why we we're redeemed by the sacrifice that was made by the sinless manifestation of God. Um, and then I, I referenced that verse that you had already just brought up. The uh, what was it? Goodness, I already lost it. I didn't put it in here, but. 20, verses 23 and 24 or whatever chapter that it is for all sin for all sin for the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus if he sinned then how is there redemption wouldn't make any sense <laughs> right no right like he became sin meaning that he died and he laid down his yeah, life she, for she, us she was right right exactly she was thinking of like the flipping tables thing, thinking that him being angry was a sin, and then she said, "No." Uh, but she's like, "I guess being angry isn't a sin." And I just shared the, I shared one of the verses actually we talked about before at some point um, in Second Chronicles. Uh, I, I just shared uh, the Second Chronicles twenty twenty five, and in several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods. And provoked to anger the Lord God of his fathers. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. That conversation we had, but um, but yeah, that, I just like it was just an example, you know, of God getting angry. Obviously, it's, it's not a sin. <laughs> God is angry with the wicked every day, right? 
And even <laughs> Ephesians 4, be ye angry and sin not. And this, being angry is not a sin. Now, I've heard of people say, that's a sin. No, it's not a sin. <laughs> yes, ignorance to say that's a sin. Because anger and uh, anger, frustration is natural. And um, God right. is angry. If, <laughs> if It's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. It's, a, it's an emotion, not a sin. Thou shalt not be angry. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. That would be in, that would be ridiculous. No, that verse right there is perfect. Be angry and sin not. I mean, yeah. That's all you need to say right there. Um, yeah, no, it's a pretty good conversation though. Um, I'm gonna try to talk to her again at some point, and we'll see what happens. But. Uh, I know you probably don't have a lot of time. There was one other thing I wanted to bring up really quick before you have to go. Um, it's not particularly pressing, but I the other day was jotting down some things that actually there's a couple things I could bring up, but we'll just whatever you have time for is fine. But there was one in particular. I was going through Matthew six again. I hadn't in a while, and uh, wanted to get your thoughts on. A verse here. Where is it? Let me find it real quick. Um, it is per, oops, I spelled it wrong. Where'd it go? It is verse 24. Matthew 6, verse 24. <coughs> so, oh, right there, you passed it? No, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no man can serve two masters, for he will hate one and love the other or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. I guess I just I was listening I was listening to that on an audiobook actually. And it occurred to me that I don't understand what it's saying. With uh, the second part of that. For so for he'll hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. And how is this why does it say hate and then despise? You know what I mean, or or maybe is it just is it just saying the same thing, just flip flops? Like maybe that's all it is. Uh, yeah, basically, basically, it's the same thing to hate and to despise. Same thing. Hold the one and love the other. The same thing. Yeah. Okay. Right. I you know I think I was just tired when I heard that and I didn't know what it meant. Now that I'm looking at it. it <laughs> It wasn't as confusing as I thought, but um, okay. Well, no, it, that makes sense. It's really just, it just uses, it, yeah, yeah. It just used different terminology, so that yeah, that makes sense. I was just, that was what confused. I was like, why? What is, what is the what is the difference here between hate and despise? But it's because it's it's because it says he hates one and love the other, or love one and hate the other, like. You either hate A and love B, or you'll love love A and hate B. Right. Is what or saying. hold on to one, which it's a, it's just a clarification of one. And so, yeah. like you've heard, um, I'm sure that the Bible defines itself. And so, this is another example of that. We see this all throughout mm -hmm. the Bible. And if you don't mind, I know that this. I don't know if this will drive you crazy or not, but. Uh, this we see this shovel several times all throughout the Bible. I'm going to use Genesis six. All right, so uh, this is from Matthew six. Now I want to use Genesis six as an example. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth that daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and that they took them wives of all which they chose. So here's another example of that same sort of method being used. Here we get in verse one we got men. And then in verse two, it's there's a sort of a clarification: the sons of God. All right. And then we got daughters. And then in verse two, daughters of men. All right. It's the same thing, right? But in verse one, um, it's more of a uh, a bolder or a broader uh, use of the word. And then uh, verse two is more of a narrower narrower use of the word all right so we but it's the same thing men sons of god same thing daughters daughters men same thing all right we see lots of examples 
of this. And I think I bring this up because to me a lot of people miss it. Okay. But but this is again another example. You, no man can serve two masters. So um, you, we see in this world today a lot of people are putting money at the forefront of their lives. <laughs> and it's silly because the day is coming when you're going to die and you can't take any of that money with you. Uh -huh. You can't take none of your possessions with you. Right? So, uh, but that's the world that we live in. And thank God this world's coming to an end. Yeah. Right. And of course, uh, you know, um, let me go into, um, you know, um, there's, you, I've heard a lot of people argue, um, yeah, it doesn't need to be capital rich, capital R, but, uh, for example, um, the camel, uh, let's, let's go with, uh, camel. Yeah. you know, for the camel to the, to the needle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it was, uh, Saturday, Saturday Night Live years ago did a skit where they, they uh, made a needle that was big enough for a camel to, it was funny. Really? Yeah. It was funny. They, the camel went through the eye of a needle. So, they, so they, I, I think it was, if I'm remembering correctly, it, it is kind of funny, but that's, you're losing, you're losing it. Um, you're losing the, the meaning of the, of this. Uh, but, uh, again, um, to, uh, for the rich man, you know, because they are so desirous of their power and their wealth that it is impossible for them to be saved. So it is better to be poor than it is to be rich. Okay. Uh -huh. <clears throat> now, if, if we were saved by our works, rich man would have an unbelievable advantage over us poor guys. Because they can do more good works in one single day than we can in an our in a, our entire life, because they have the right. the money and the means to make things happen. But wealth and uh, works have nothing to do with salvation, nothing at all. Yeah. All right, and, but I mean, if you watch TV and you think, oh, this candidate, he's a he's a Christian. He's got millions of dollars, and he does lots of good stuff. He's a Christian. we got to vote for him. Well, you're fooled. You're deceived. You're wrong. And you're falling for their game. And that's why I say stay away. Stay out of their game because they're all liars and deceivers. You think about the young, rich ruler. Uh, let's see if I can find this verse. Uh, oh, the young, rich man. The young was the young ruler. Uh, he says that he he kept all the commandments from his youth, right? He says, "From my youth up, have I kept the commandments?" Well, never mind the fact that he's lying. But let's just go with it. All right. I'll, let's look eighteen again. I'm sorry. Uh, it all is also okay. So, anyways. Um, he, uh, he claimed that he kept all the commandments. Do not. He never committed adultery. He never killed. He never stole. He never bare fault witness. He honored his mother and father. All these have I kept from my youth up. Rather than saying, no, you haven't. You're lying. Uh, Jesus said, okay. And, you know, first of all, he asked, what lackest thou? Or, I'm sorry. All these. Now, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, yet. Yeah, Lackest thou one thing? Now, okay, that's a little bit different than what we read in, was it Matthew 18? Uh, the wording's a little bit different. Uh, no, okay, let me, hold on a sec. Because, I, uh, Matthew 19, excuse me. It's the same, same story. All right, so, um, he says, uh, the young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all 
that you have and give to the poor and thou shalt treasure in heaven come and follow me well he was not about to sell everything he had and when he heard that he he went away sorrowful because he was not about to give up his brand new Maserati or his brand new Mercedes or whatever you know <laughs> yeah. hey screw that I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my hot tub and my swimming pool and all that I'm not gonna go you know I'm not gonna go follow this yeah. guy screw that and so he he cherished his possessions more than his own life really uh, mm -hmm. well in a sense because right. uh, he didn't care about everlasting life he didn't care about God he didn't c care about uh, the world to come he cared about this world and this world's coming to an end and so also is that young man coming to an end alright so again uh, uh, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. Who then can be saved? And Jesus beheld them and said uh, unto them, With men this is impossible, with God all things are possible. So this doesn't mean at all that the young man was saved. doesn't mean at all. And what it means is that those riches are will not save anybody at all, period. No matter how much... Uh, wealth you have, no much, ha no matter how much power you have, and they can get in your way. And of course, that aligns with uh, in Matthew six. Um, oh goodness, where is it? I'm sure, you know what I'm talking about. It's in Matthew six, right? Yeah, lay not up your fair cells treasures upon earth. Uh, verse nineteen, Matthew six. Still had it up on my screen here. Uh, don't put treasures on earth, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, again, that's another reason to stay out of politics. And I see a lot of, and I myself was mixed up into it, thinking George Bush, he's looking out for the American people. Well... <laughs> I should have known, you know, uh, looking back when I used to argue with my mom and say that all those Democrats, they're all liars, and she would say, no, Jimmy, all them Republicans are liars. And it turns out we were... Same thing happening right now. Yeah, it turns out we were both right. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're all liars. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Uh, it's a whirlwind, a uh, back and forth whirlwind, and um, just like you, you look outside, you see a tornado, of, you want to avoid that whirlwind, avoid it, you don't want to get caught up in it, and uh -huh. the same thing, and of course, um, we've had talks hard about, to do. it's hard to do, isn't it? Yeah, cause people are talking about it everywhere, all the time, yeah. my friends, people at work, yeah, 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 no, that's... That's why I, I, I bring up that story all the time. To say, hey, look, man, these guys are all liars. Why are you, find, why are you falling for their BS? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, Obama's no savior. Trump's no savior. They're both liars, deceivers, evil men, wicked and corrupt to the core. You shouldn't have no part of it. What are they going to do? Okay, let's, let's, let's play this out for a second, then i got to go. Let's say, okay, they hire whoever. Or, you know, they, uh, what do you call it? elect whoever. Same thing. They, and, this, and this guy, he makes America the, the best country in the world. And we're all, you know, sitting in hot tubs and watching cable TV or whatever. We all drive, we're all driving brand new cars. Right? We all got iPhones or whatever. Uh, what, what good is that, man? What good is that knowing that because we're prospering, you got countries all over the world that are suffering. You got poor people all over, all over the world that are dying. Yeah. Kids, kids dying of hunger. So, yeah. what good? Kids dying all sorts of stuff. What, what good is it? <coughs> what, and knowing not just that, but that this world, this country, the United States of America is coming to an end 
What do you think when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that the United States is going to continue? <laughs> Some people probably think that. I, I wonder. Honestly. I wonder. <laughs> Let's see what the Bible says. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, which is the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That means no more internet, no more cell phone. Okay? In the which the heaven shall pass away, and the elements shall melt. The elements, your, your cell phone, your TV, your brand new car, it's all going to melt. Your house, your home, your swimming pool, your hot tub, it's all going to melt. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And now, of course, your only argument is to say that this is a lie. That the Bible can't be trusted. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay, everything that we see with our eyes it, on earth, it's going to melt. It's going to be burned up. All right, so, uh, so the United States, the White House, it's all going to be melted. It's all going to dissolve. It's all going to be done away with. There will not be uh, the United States Constitution, which they don't even follow. Uh, right. Anyway, so that's a, that's a whole another thing. It's, they don't abide by it. They're liars. They're all deceivers. It's all about money and all that corruption. Is, it's going to be done away with when yeah. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All those people that work in the White House, you know what's going to happen? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, they're all going to mourn. They're all gonna wail. They're gonna be. They're gonna be shocked out of their minds. You think about Revelation one, verse seven. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds, not some, all kindreds of the earth. This includes all those people in the White House, all those people in Washington D.C. All kindreds of the earth shall wail. Well, this isn't shedding tears. This is almost violently crying. Yeah, yeah. Wailing. Because, and then you go to Luke 21. It says men's, oops, it says men's hearts will fail them for fear. People are going to be having heart attacks when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven because they know it's the end of the world. Obama's not coming back to save them. And Donald Trump's not coming back to save them. It's over. It's the end of this world. All right. Everything on earth is going to be dissolved. So this idea that, that, that politics matters, it don't matter. It don't mean nothing at all. And it's a distraction in... Um, and the, so that's why I'm constantly telling people, letting people know where I stand. I'm against all of them, okay? Yeah. Because they're all hellbound. They say they believe in Jesus. I, I don't believe it. Yeah, it's full of crap. So many people are falling for it too. It's unbelievable. Right. I mean, I, I see almost nobody who wants to know the truth. Like most of the people who think that they want to know the truth and think that they're like whatever, looking into these conspiracies or whatever, most of them are Trump followers, mm -hmm. and, and basically everybody else is a, is a Biden or whatever, you know, they're all either on this side or that side, and all, I see all my friends are like it, and I just, I see it everywhere, it's just, it's just crazy, and I, you know, I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell them, well, you know, I don't think just because I'm laughing at how stupid I think Trump is or whatever doesn't mean I'm a Biden supporter or vice versa like I you know I don't I don't I have, I have to make it clear like I do not support 
neither party. I do not have a political affiliation. Um, but I, things I say, I got looked at as the as the kook. Even though I think, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't think highly of myself, but I, I feel like I provide pretty sound logic and, and reasoning for things I believe. And if they want to listen, then they can. And it seems like they never do. But yeah, no. It, you know, they reviled Jesus too. You know that, right? Um, yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're Jesus or anything. It doesn't mean you're right. But no, this, it's just that's how the world treats when the truth is being spoken yeah. or something. Yeah, they kill something all, that doesn't go along with the world's, you know, bull crap. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, that's why I, I'm always constantly telling these guys that I don't watch the news. They, they it's incredible to me when somebody comes to me and says, "Oh, did you hear on the news that?" Or they, you know, they say something with the assumption that I'm following the news, and I'm not. Right. I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Um, it's just by chance that I come across things. Like I think I shared with you the other day, um, battleships in Florida or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's only because I read a headline by. Yeah, chance. that's how it is for me too. I'll either see a headline or all my friends will be talking about something. I usually try to ignore it, but well, it, it's, just, it's just everywhere. It's to me, to me, it's interesting because it's always a headline to strike fear into somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah. no, we're all gonna die. It's incredible. Yeah. It's so I mean, is, uh, is Florida getting bombed? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this has been going on for years and years and years and years. Oh my God, we're all gonna die! And it, and I think half of it is they're trying to promote this idea. Well, you got to, you got to vote for somebody to save you. And and so you know you got to vote for Obama. He's gonna save us from these bad guys getting us. And same thing with Bush and Trump and all the others. You got to vote for this guy. You're gonna save us. No, uh-huh. it's just the uh, media uh, promoting fear or proper. You know what's the word I'm looking for? Propaganda propaganda propagating uh, fear and that the, yeah, we need to yeah. go, you got to go to the doctor the doctor is going to save your life and you got to get these drugs yeah. and all this sort of stuff no, seriously the, the whole system I was, I was going to say that earlier like it's not just politics like right it's like they've got they've got a pillar of this fake salvation for you in every direction you turn they've got some kind of system in place that you're supposed to be able to depend on and rely on it's all it's all crap yeah they at the end of the day you're gonna die <laughs> and this world's coming to yeah. an end the doctor's not all gonna save people, you all right all these people are like that that prince or, or whatever he was the, the young man with the riches so I feel like that's what so a lot of these people are like I mean I shouldn't I shouldn't point fingers at other people so like I'm <laughs> any better but um, you know, it's just important to important to be aware and to know that none of that stuff. It's all vanity. It is all vanity. It is. Now, uh, are you better than they are? Well, mm, I'm you, a sinner, like they are. Right. Right. But. Um, let me make the case that you're better than they are. Okay. I mean, I can make the case that I'm, I, I've seen plenty. <laughs> I mean, you share what you're going to share, but, well, and, you know, this almost pr- brings me into another topic that I wanted to bring up, but that you don't have time for, so it's okay. Well, if you but can you make can. it real short, I can make it real short, too. So, Revelation 1, well, go ahead. God has made us go kings ahead. and priests, right? We are kings and priests unto God. We go to, um... Oh, I can't remember now. Oh, goodness sakes. I was going to say about well, priesthood. It's in First uh, Peter, I believe. First Peter 2, yes. We are a royal priesthood and holy nation, peculiar people, right? So, we are right. royalty. Right? We go to right. Revelation 20, where uh, it says we are kings and or we are priests of God and of Christ, right? Right now. Right now we are 
royalty, right? So we are, uh, we sit on heavenly thrones, right? So right. in that sense, we are uh, set aside from those. Now, we ought to present ourselves as uh, humble and present ourselves as servants and not as masters, right? Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that you wanted to share real quick? Well, just the the two verses we talked about the other day where it says, ye are gods. No, it's a, it's a lowercase g. Uh, you and I have talked about people worshiping false gods. And uh, I remember you specifically saying, you know, they would worship these people as false gods, but they're really not no gods at all. And there's only one true God. Now, with that being said, why is it saying this? And I guess, I guess just like, I don't know, I just, I, you know, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I feel like it's just something I wanted to, it, it is something I wanted to expand on, and if you don't have time for it, that's okay, but. Well, let me just make one, one point here. Um, so if we go to this uh, mention in, in Psalm 82, what was that verse that you've, the very first, uh, Matthew 6, Matthew 6, the very first um, verse that you, we looked at about uh, I think it's twenty, wasn't it? Was it? Verse no, 19? no, no, no. Or what was it? Twenty-four? Oh yeah. Okay, so oh, yeah, there you go. no man can have two masters for either he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. So hold and love, same thing. Despise and hate, same thing. So we see. A, a, an, an echoing or a, a clarification a broader and a narrower so also let's go to Psalm 82 and we're going to see is that same example here ye I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High so here's a broader sense and then a more narrower yeah. sense okay children of the Most High so the gods and children of the Most High same thing alright so and then, the, so, I, I'm guessing your question is a little bit different than the context of uh, John 10, for example. See, John 10, Jesus is using this as uh, an example that, hey, in the it is written in your law that you're God's, so then why are you getting, um, you know, why are you getting in a tizzy because I said I'm the Son of God? If the, in your law it says that you are God's. And so if I say I'm the Son of God, then why is there a problem? All right. So, and, but I don't think that's um, perhaps the question that's in your, um, well, in your yeah, mind. Yeah, it's just, it's just I, guess, I guess here's my ultimate dilemma is it's, it's tricky to balance having being told something like that and also being where you're supposed to be humble you know and have humility um, and recognize that you need a savior and that you didn't do any of this on your own and that you were royalty right and it says that you were gods I mean you don't want to go around telling people oh well I'm a god no probably not <laughs> probably not and even though it says it right there so it's like you know, even if not even what you're just telling people, but what how, what you're just believing, maybe on the inside. You know what you're telling yourself, because that's where the true humility comes from is on the inside. But just like you said earlier, like uh, we're not the same as as the unbelievers. If we're royalty, we're kings and priests. You know, so it's just a tr it's kind of a tricky balance, bal like balancing act. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. And, and so let me. Let me put it this way, too. There are two things that come to mind. And one is that we are, we need us. In order to be um, gods, to be children of the Most High, we, we have to be brought down low in order to be brought back up again. We have to be, yeah. we have to realize that we need a Savior, right? We have to be born of God. Okay, we're all born of the flesh, but we're not all born of the Spirit of God. So... We have to have that humbleness to begin with in order to be exalted, right? And then, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, oh, give me a second here. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you think about 
uh, and I just love this. I don't I don't know why, but I just I love this. Um, and um, where is this at? Um, Luke 17. The apostle said un, unto the Lord, "Increase our faith." And that's something I think all of us that are born of God ought to desire to have um, increased understanding, yeah. increased wisdom, and all that sort of stuff. And, and here right. we've got a great example where... Uh, I think you passed it. Did I pass it already? I yeah. so. Right there. There, way up there. Okay. So um, we... Uh, the, the apostles ask Jesus, increase our faith. And, and he... He gives us a great uh, teaching here, great understanding, really, of what it's what it takes to have uh, really um, complete faith or perfect faith, and that is, um, let's see, right here. He gives all these examples, right, of um, mm -hmm. if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, it, the, your faith will grow huge, big, and so on and so forth. And so here, it, in, almost in conclusion, it says in verse 10, So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. So in other words, it's not you doing anything. It's what God has done through you. Right? We are unprofitable servants. So it's not us. It's not what we're doing. It's what God has done for us. And you think about John. Uh, oh, I think it's 15. Hold on a second. Let me think. One second here. Yep. One. Uh, it's, it's John 15, where Jesus says, I am the true vine. Right? And he says, Here, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth me. And I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, for without me, ye can do nothing. So, everything that we do, it's all glory to God. Right? He gets all the credit for everything. We are all... So, what he's saying here in Luke 17 is, it, to have that attitude, that mentality, that we are unprofitable servants, we're just doing what our duty is. So we don't we don't deserve any. If we walk an old lady across the street, that's we shouldn't get the credit for that. That's all glory to God. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's that is a great way to put it for sure. Yeah, yeah. For without me, ye can do nothing. So really, it's not about us, right? Mm -hmm. It's about God. And so if you revere and respect God. Then, um, then there then, should then, be no. Then you're saying, you're saying, I, I am a, I am the branch to the vine that is Jesus, right? So right. that is like an extremely powerful statement, but it is not to glorify yourself. It has nothing to do with you. Right. Exactly. It's everything that you're doing through God, everything that God is doing through you, actually, rather, right? Like. You just want to be a vessel for God to work through just to save souls and, and that sort of thing. Right. Hey, yeah, that's it, a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, so there, there's no reason to be... Uh, how, what's the... Uh, cocky or arrogant or, uh, you know, right. exalt... Right. There's no reason to exalt your own self uh, at all. You, right. Uh, quite the opposite. You want to remain humble and know that God is in control of it all. There's nothing to worry about. There's no need to exalt yourself. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, I think we're about 20 minutes over. Yeah. Uh, boy, we ought to do this more often because there, there's a lot of stuff we could touch upon. That it, All of it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I came to this with about two two verses I was going to ask you about, and here we are, an hour and oh, ten minutes in, yeah. and we could keep going if we wanted. We could, we could. We, but oh. uh, I appreciate you taking the time with me. I I, I really needed this. I, um, I I feel like I've gotten a lot of fulfillment out of this conversation. So uh, it's always my pleasure.